Hey everybody, Aaron here and welcome back to Keep Painting Minis. Today we're going to be painting an Empire Hunter Bowman from One Page Rules from My Mini Factory. These Bowmen are going to make great proxies for your old world Bretonians or any other fantasy archer you may have in mind. The link to the STLs are in the description. Also, I'm going to be showing you some great tips and tricks that are going to make your slap chop painting faster, easier, and better than ever. So stay tuned to the end of the video where we'll recap those tips so that you can take them on board to your painting practices yourself. Now let's get started. Today's tip number one guys, and this one is revolutionary. Oil paints for your slap chop dry brushing. Look at this, one small dollop of oil paints, just a little bit of paint on the brush, and I have so much control. Watch this, just gentle stroking on the model. Paint goes exactly where I want, not chalky, not scratchy, not drying on my brush, no repeated trips back to the paint well. I get a terrific blend of values all the way from black through gray up to bright white. I can come in after my first once around and emphasize any particular parts that I want. Now these are oil paints, so you do need to give them a full day to dry before you put down your acrylics, your speed trash paints, but don't let anybody tell you you need to coat them with varnish first. Speed trash will go, any acrylic paint will go right over this oil after it's got a day to dry, as you'll see with today's painting. Now of course you can't clean your oil paint brushes with water. You need this odorless mineral spirit. I put a thimble full into two different pots. I clean most of the oil off in the first pot and then I Give it a final clean in the second pot, wipe it dry, and you are good to go. Now let's go ahead and compare that to the standard dry brush with the traditional acrylics. Now this is fine, and this is what we've been doing forever, but you can see how chalky and scratchy the finish is. I have to keep going back to the paint well for more paint. My brush bristles are getting all dried and crunchy, and you have less graduation in value. You get either just bright white or dark black and really nothing in between unless you're willing to do that extra mid-tone gray dry brush step before you go to the bright white. Plus applying the oils is a much more pleasant experience that's so forgiving. You just got to give it a try and tell me in the comments what you think. So this is the Bowman we're going to paint today. He's been dry brushed with the oil paint, so you'll be able to see how well the speed trast and the regular acrylics paint right over the oil. Today's tip number two. Now this one you already know, but if you're like me, you don't always do it. And that is, plan which parts of the model you're going to paint what color, grab those paints off the rack, put them on your desk so you don't have to think every five minutes about which paint you want next and where it is on your shelf. And with that in mind, we're going to start with Army Painter Speed Paint Forest Sprite. But before we do that, I've got to tell you about my favorite brush. This is the Raphael 8404 number two. You'll witness for yourself, this is the only brush you will ever need. The tip does everything you need to do and the belly holds plenty of paint. Now it's a hefty $23 brush. I'll leave a link below on where you can buy this thing, but I'm telling you, save up, get yourself one, and you won't regret it. Now today's tip number three, when applying speed trash to your slap chop, you want to apply one thin transparent coat. You don't need to apply it like traditional speed trash with plenty of liquid so that it pools into the crevices because you've already created the contrast with your undercoat. And that's one of the big advantages of slap chop. We all know that when we apply speed trast in the traditional way, we put on a lot of liquid and it pools in undesired places that are hard to control. But here you've already got the contrast, so you just need to put on a transparent coat. So now we have our Bowman's stylish hoodie, base coated in speed paint bright red, and that contrasts nicely with the green pants and green shirt. Now we're coming in with Army Painter Speed Paint Bony Matter. Now you can see that this is not a very highly pigmented color. And so we are gonna give his protective vest here two coats of the Bony Matter. 
Now it's time for the trim on his protective vest with Citadel Militarum Green Contrast. I thought this was going to be a more visually distinct green compared to the pants, but it's not. But after the highlighting stage, you'll see that it still stands out nicely. Now we're coming in with Vallejo Express Color Wasteland Brown, another sort of speed trash paint that you guys might be familiar with. You'll see on our Bowman that I use three different browns just to offer some visual variation. On our fantasy models, there's always a lot of leather and wood. And so why not bring in a variety of browns just to make it more interesting on the eye? So here with the Wasteland Brown, we're getting the leather on his boots, the leather on his forearm bracers, and the leather wraps on his bow. The next brown is the Army Painter Speed Paint Fire Drake which is a warmer brown with a little orange in it and that is for the wooden shafts of the arrows and also the lower layer of his leather belt. The next brown is the Army Speed Paint Brownish Decay. Now this brown has a little more black in it and that is for his bow. And you'll also notice that I had forgotten to cover his quiver and the leather straps for his shin bracers. I came back with the Express Wasteland Brown because I thought that was the right color for those leather bits. Okay now, slap chop and Caucasian skin, always a problem. You do have to base coat with something, in this case warrior skin, but there isn't enough consistent bright undercoat from the dry brushing to make it look anything other than a cruddy mess. So you do have to come in at a later stage, which we will, with a couple of glaze layers of traditional skin color in order to bring him up to a healthy looking level. And by the way, I hope you're appreciating that Raphael brush that I bragged about earlier. Look at the tip. Look at the control you have with this thing. I can't say enough about it. But just to be clear, this is not an endorsement. I have no relationship with the brush manufacturer or with One Page Rules who designed this wonderful Bowman model. Now we're on to Citadel Nasdrag Yellow Contrast for the base coat of the Bowman's blonde hair. Next coming in with a traditional acrylic game color dead white for the feathers on the arrows. I have found after experimenting with a lot of color combinations that the warm brown with the white fletching. Side note, one of you medieval warfare experts will let me know if fletching is not the right word for feathers on an arrow shaft. But yes, the bright white against the warm brown wood makes a good combination. Now usually for my silver bits on my slap chop models, I will actually go to a true metallic, something like Citadel Lead Belcher. But I felt that the slap chop dry brushing on this model did such a good job with the highlights and the shadow areas that I wanted to stick with a speed trash paint in order to have a more consistent finish with the rest of the model. So the silver metallics are done with the Army Painter Speed Paint Ashen Stone.
Now here's where we're going to fix his Caucasian skin with glazes of successive flesh tones. I use this glaze medium, Altier Clear Painting Medium. It offers a really nice sort of heavy body and longer working time I found than some of the other glaze mediums that are more commonly used amongst us in the hobby. So as you saw on my thumb there, I mixed a pretty transparent glaze and I'll make my way around the skin bits of the model several times to build up a smooth layer of this Kizla flesh and then we'll come in with something lighter in a similar fashion. And you can see he is already looking much healthier and we'll come in next and brighten him up even more. So here a similar glazing routine with a slightly lighter skin tone flayed one flesh from Citadel. And you'll see with this brighter highlight I'm hitting some of the common bright spots, the knuckles, the high cheekbones, the forehead, the bridge of the nose. So here his protective vest was looking quite flat to me, so for very little extra effort I brought in this Pro Acryl Bright Ivory to touch the rivets in order to draw the eye to the textures and contrast and depth of the vest. So our next steps are going to be our highlighting steps, which will include today's tips number four and five, but you could definitely stop here. If you've got several of these guys to field on the tabletop, they're going to look terrific just the way they are. This is traditional slap chop. But what's next is today's tips number four and five. Tip number four is one highlight per base color using a lightened version of that base color. That way you don't have to think about what the highlight's going to consist of. And tip number five is lay out what I call your highlight brighteners or mixers on your wet palette so that you can choose an appropriate color to mix with that base color and get on with hitting the higher surfaces and any edge highlighting that is easy to get to. So you can see on my palette what I call the highlight mixer options, a pale yellow, an ivory, a white, a flesh or bone color, and a yellow. And in this case, I've taken my original Forest Sprite speed paint that were used, was used on the pants and the shirt, and I've mixed in a little of the pale yellow, and I'm hitting the raised surfaces and the edges where I can reach them.
Now coming in with game color dead white to highlight the armor using some of the usual techniques for edge highlighting which is using that sharp tip of the brush where you have to and using this side of the brush when you can catch an edge with the side of the brush. Now here I'm sort of violating my tip number four which is to use the original base color and brighten it up. Instead I'm using Yashabity Bone to highlight each of the browns. If you remember we used three different browns but Yashabity Bone is a suitable highlight for all of them. As we know rules are made to be broken and so if it's faster do it. Next we're going to highlight the Bowman's blonde hair with Nasdrag yellow mixed with a little pale yellow and a little yellow yellow. And we're going to do this in two stages. We're going to do a first highlight making our way around the different strands. And then we're going to lighten that highlight up a little bit with additional pale yellow and just tap the top of the head where the light would be hitting most strongly. Now time to highlight his red hoodie, starting with the original base color, the Speed Paint Bright Red. Now I start with the brightening mixer, Ivory, but when you mix red with something white or off-white, you start to get pink. So then I've added yellow to push it more towards orange. So that's the one highlight per base color method. So simple, super quick, and really adds to the visual interest and readability of the model. And now it's time for some old school basing in keeping with everyone's nostalgia for Warhammer Fantasy Battles as brought back to us by the old world. So we've got our 25 mil square base and we're base coating that with a very watered down mix of Carrick Stone watered down so that we don't scrape off the fine sand that we glued to the top with PVA. Then we're going to shade that down with some Agrax Earthshade also watered down. 
tapping carefully so we don't peel off our fine sand. A quick first highlight with Citadel Ushabity Bone. Again, tapping very carefully rather than the usual aggressive dry brushing because I don't want to scrape off the sand that was PVA down the night before. A quick final dry brush with a little bit brighter pale yellow. And of course, some flocking strategically placed in a few lumps here and there to finish off that beautiful old school base. And now we'll pull back the curtain for a final look at our finished Bowman and a recap of the tips so you can take on board the ones that work for you. Tip number one, try oil paints for your slap chop dry brushing. Tip number two, plan which parts of the model you're going to paint what colors, grab those off your rack and put them on your desk. Tip number three, you don't need speed trash paints pooling on your slap chop, one thin transparent coat. Your dry brushing already created the contrast for you. Tip number four, for your final quick highlight stage, lay out a variety of your highlight mixers on your palette ahead of time. Tip number five, up your slap chop game with a quick final highlight using a brightened version of the original base color. And of course, the most important tip of the day, keep painting minis. If you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it, please hit that like, go ahead and share, and of course subscribe so you don't miss more coming from Keep Painting Minis.